Okay, good morning and welcome to a new week of Yeshiva YouTube, just off it. Daf Yomi Shir. We're starting a new parak, the sixth parak of Mesechus Ksubos, Samach Vav, number 66. We have a great share for you today. We're going to be talking about <clears throat> what a woman finds. She works extra overtime. We're talking about Nakdimon Ben Gurion's daughter, who went from being a multimillionaire to trying to pick barley from a feces. Of donkeys uh, for to sustain herself. Crazy story. Let's get into it. On <clears throat> the bottom of Sanachem at Bez, <clears throat> the Mishnah, the new parak. What a woman finds. We'll discuss this more in the Gemara exactly what this means, what she finds. Does it mean she goes down the street, she finds a $5 bill? Um, that's one of the meanings. There's other meanings also. What she earns, her wages that she earns, she has a job. They belong to her husband, according to the Tanakam. Rishasa, what she <clears throat> has properties. She has real estate she brought into the marriage. So the husband doesn't, doesn't take full ownership over this uh, real estate that she brought in, uh, unless she gives it to him. Um, <clears throat> so he's, <clears throat> he gets the dividends or the actual fruits if it's a real field. He gets to eat those things. He doesn't have to repay that. Boshto Pagam, let's say she's embarrassed. Uh, by somebody else, or she's devalued by somebody else. Um, someone did something to her. They maimed her. They raped her. Things like that. Who does that belong to? Shalah, according to the Tanakam, it belongs entirely to her. Rabbi Yehuda ben Maseira Omer, Bizman she b'seiser lashnei chalakim lo echad. He says it depends if the person caused her a blemish on her body that's normally covered by clothing, so she gets two thirds of the payment, and he gets the husband gets one third. Bizman she b'goloi. When the maiming is on the outside, he gets two thirds and she gets one third. What belongs to him is either one third or two thirds, according to Yudu and Seira. You give that immediately to the husband. She doesn't own it entirely. It's like real estate that she owns. It's going, it's going, the money goes to purchase real estate, to purchase land. Um, and he gets the dividends, he gets the payrolls while they're still married. Where says Michael Mash Milan? What's the Kiddish of our Mishnah? Tanina, we have a Mishnah on Daf Mem Vov. We had this in the last The father is entitled in his daughter's Kiddushin, whether it's through money or a star or a document or a Bia, um, through intercourse. Zakai Msiasa, meaning he's in charge of giving her over for Kiddushin in any of those three ways. Zakai Msiasa, and he gets the Kasa Kiddushin. It's money. Zakai Msiasa. He is also entitled to what she finds. We might say a debt or earnings. He, if she makes a vow, he can annul her vow. If she's divorced as a Nara or a Katana, so the father, he accepts the get on behalf of his daughter. However, any property that was given as an investment by relatives or someone else to the daughter, he does not eat those fruits and it belongs entirely to his daughter. Nisis. If she gets married to a husband, yes, Charlotte Abal, the husband gets all those things, the aforementioned things, Shu Ochal Peros, the husband gets one extra thing, is that any real estate, any land that belonged to her, he gets to eat the Peros, the duration of their marriage. Boshto Pagama, um, if she's embarrassed, or, so the Gemara said, answers, Boshto Pagama, it's Srikhalai, plug to the Rehud of Misera Rabbanan, the Chiddush, our Mishnah, you're right, basically redundant. However, there is a Chiddush because we talked about something we hadn't talked about before, the Boshto Pagama. Who does that belong to in the marriage? So, and that's a machlokas. We know Yisera and the Rabbanon. Rabbanon hold it entirely belongs to him, and according to Yisera, they split it. Tani Tana Kamei Rava, a Tana, an author of a Mishnah, a Brisa, taught the following Brisa in front of Rava. He has a Isha Laatzma. The Brisa says what the wife finds belongs to her. Bekiva Omer Labayla. He says it belongs to her husband, like our Mishnah. Omer Hashta. So when Rava heard this, he said Hashta Mahadafa, top of Sounds pretty loud in here. People are screaming on the base matters. Hashto ma hadafa. Now the hadafa. The maisei adahi. We're going to learn that about hadafa. We've talked about it before. If she earns more than she's supposed to earn, right? The Mishnah listed on in the last parak how much she's supposed to earn depending on where she lives. Um, she's supposed to. The ba most basic work for a woman is is to weave. Or, to sew, and she a certain amount of money she has to bring in uh, every month, not a, a large amount of money. If she earns more than that, um, <clears throat> right, hadafa, that's what hadafa means, she earns more than that. 
the Maisi Adah, yeah, that's part of her Maisi Adah, Amar Rebekiva La'asma, Rebekiva says that the Hadafa, the extra Maisi Adah, belonged to herself, Mitziyasa Lagolshke, and certainly the Mitziyah, what she finds, right, which, right, there's more of a reason, we'll see why, there's more of a reason should go, that should go to her. So why does Rebekiva say it goes to her husband? <sighs> This not how do you know that? It's not konam shani osel lepicha. We had this price before. It's a mission in the Durham. If a per, the husband takes a ned there, that or the woman takes a ned there, whatever I do, whatever my mice say, that whatever I earn should have the status of a ned there. Lepicha, you're not allowed to benefit from it. Ain't no sarf lahafir. Tana kama holds doesn't have to be made for the nether. The husband doesn't have to be made for the nether because it doesn't take effect because she's meshubud. She has to earn wages for him. Rekiva Omer Yafer, he says you should be made for the nether. Shema Tad Lov Yosem and Aroyle. You're right. That the, what the basic amount that she has to earn it belongs to the husband, and the nether won't be won't take effect on that. However, if she earns more than she's supposed to earn, then it will take effect on that. It will take effect. She's had the Shema Tad Lov Yosem and Aroyle more than he's supposed to get, which was five slime in Yehuda or ten slime in Begolo. Ela Epoch. So based on this, the Gemara says we have to flip it around. Mitzias Aisha Labayla, the price around. Mitzias Aisha Labayla. Tanaka Amol and Mitzias Aisha goes to her husband. Rakiva Omer La Atma. Rakiva, in line with the Jesuit before, that Hadafa, even Mike said, I'm going to her, so too the Mitzia, what she finds, belongs to herself. Aha, Kiasa Robin. Robin came. I'm a Rabbi Yochanan. I'm a Hadafa. Shalari Deyatcha. Kuleamalo Pligi. The Baal Happy. Robin said the name of Rabbi Yochanan. There's two types of Hadafa. Hold on a second. I was going to see if I can make it a little lower. Let's close the window over here. Sorry about that. Uh, the windows are closed. I don't know. They're really screaming today. It's be a fierce day in the base medrash. All right. So back to the Gemara. The Gemara says, "Kiyasa Rav and Amr Yochanan Hadafa Shalai Dei Etchak Ule Amlo Pligi the Baal Heavy." Everyone agrees. By Hadafa Shalai Dei Etchak, she earns extra money. That's easy for her to earn extra money. We'll soon talk about what this means. Kule Amlo Pligi the Baal Heavy. Everyone agrees that belongs to the husband because that's included in her Maisei Adayim. We're talking about where she works overtime. She earns extra money through exertion, through extra work she puts in. Tanakama Zavala Baila. Tanakama holds it belongs to her husband. Rabbi Kiva Zavala Atma, she gets to keep it. Um, so he says, Rabbi Yochan said, when it comes to um, things. Well, just to explain what this means, meaning she, a normal woman, only has to weave and make a certain amount of money. If she has a better, a high paying job, she's an accountant, she's got a CPA, she's a lawyer, that's considered to be a hadafa, that's extra money that she earns, because she's working the same hours as weaving or sewing, she just is a more professional job, so she earns more money. So that, Everyone agrees that's like belongs to the husband. That's her earnings. Just like he'd earn the money that she for her weaving, so too she'd earn the money. He'd earn the money for <clears throat> for uh, being a lawyer. Whatever you know, she gets per hour. You know, gets pretty lucrative for a lawyer, especially a woman lawyer. They can be very smart if they're a lawyer. So, <clears throat> um, so everyone agrees. So the machlokis is the norikiv and tanakama. Is extra work that she has to do overtime, right? She takes on a second job. She works overtime, right? That's exertion for her, right? Tanakama is the Bible. Tanakama holds, belongs to the husband. So that's the machlokas. I'm a rapapa. Mitziyasak hadafa shayed chak dami. Plukta de Rabbi Akiva Rabbanan. The Gemara in the Havamina thought that Mitziyasa, what she finds, is like, um, it's like hadafa shaloi de chak. It's extra money that she earns. Right, that you don't have to put the extra hour. You go walk down the street, you find a five dollar bill. That's like a lawyer earning extra money for the same amount of time she puts in as someone who's sewing or weaving. However, the Gemara's maskana is no that Mitsiasa, the Mitsia we're talking about over here in our Mishnah, the Machlokas in Rakiva and the Rabban and Tanakama is talking about a different type of Mitsia. I'm gonna explain this more in Eon Ben Sion. A different type of Mitsia, which is considered like Ali Atak. It's like she's putting in extra hours. There, there's an opinion that actually Rakiva holds it belongs to herself. Boy, Rav Papa. Rav Papa asked the following question. Asa lo shtayim b'vasaka. She multitasks. She does two jobs. She does them simultaneously. Mao. 
right? Does is that like hadaf al yadchak? Is that part of the machlok? Is there a kibbutz rabbanon? By Ravina, Ravina says, assuming right, um, two tasks is not considered extra. Shlosh al dalad rabas achas ma'ol. Is she entitled? If she works three or four different, does three or four different things simultaneously. She really knows how to multitask. So maybe she should get it in that case also. Ma'ol take with the Gemara says we're not sure what the halacha of that is. We'll discuss more of this Gemara. The two different types of mitzia, two different types of finding. It doesn't just mean. Obviously, it has to mean. Finding money in the street is not really a lot of work, not a lot of exertion. What is the Gemara talking about? Metzia is like hadaf al It's like earning money through extra money through exertion, finding something in the street. There's a different type of metzia that Gemara is alluding to. We'll talk more about that. It means in Eno Ben Sion. Bosha of Pagama. Her Bosha and Pagam belong to, according to the Rabbana, belongs to her. According to the Seri, is split. Maskil of Rabba bar According to this, right, you embarrass a woman, a man's wife. So, according to, um, according to human Sarah, he gets part of it. So, if you embarrass someone's horse, he also gets part of it. I mean, it's like embarrass someone's wife. Why do you, you're not embarrassed by it? It's your wife. If anyone you should pay to her, like not a comma, why are you paying to him? <coughs> So the Gemara says, the Gemara asks on this question, Asus bar Boshas? There's no Boshas by Asus. It's a bad question. Horses don't get embarrassed. Right? If you spit on someone's clothing, it didn't get on his actual skin, you have to give Boshas to him. Like his wife is like his skin, with his shirt. Maybe, yeah, you do. But not. The Mishra says in Baba Kama, if you spat at him and it went on his, on his body, on his skin, or he unraveled the woman's hair, or he took off someone's jacket or his shirt. You embarrass him. You have to give 400 zoos, 400 of that country's denomination. Papa, You only talked about Bo, big doe putter. If he spat and it landed on his clothing, you're putter. So the grand answer is big doe lace lazy loose. Spit arrives on it, it touches his clothing. He's not embarrassed. Isha is lazy loose ever if you hurt or embarrass his wife, so then you will feel, the husband will feel embarrassed also. Let's say you have a rich family, and one of them, you know, wasn't so lucky, and he lost his big fortune that he was granted inheritance, and you embarrassed him, so you have to pay him a nice sum because he's part of a bigger family, it's a famous family. Um you have to give Boshas an account of one person to the rest of the family. right? He's not someone who is a poor person. He wouldn't be embarrassed. His family is embarrassed. The Gemara assumes the obvious. You wouldn't have to give Boshas in that case. The Gemara says, That's not his body. His wife is part of his body. So when you embarrass his wife, it's like you're embarrassing him. He's part of his body. You'll have to explore this more throughout Shas. The woman is part of his body. And therefore, it's like you embarrass him. Therefore, he would get entitled to, according to Rabbi Seira, a certain part of the boshas. Masisin, haposek mos lechosno. Right, you get married here in Israel. You want to impress the chosen. You want to have the chosen agree to marry your daughter. So you promise a certain amount of money to your as a part of a dowry to the chosen, the chosen from Ponovich, Tifra, Chama Chosna Amru Chachamim, Umeis, and before they got married, the chosen died. Now, normally when a husband dies after the heiress, she's omed leibam, right, to the husband's brother because they didn't have any children. So the, the father-in-law can say to this chassan that I really wanted. So he was in town the dowry, but I don't have to give the yavam a dowry. You can say that. Um, if the father-in-law promised to give elf dinar a thousand dollars, let's say who posts a connection and Hamish is Raymana, he has to write in the Ksuba that if they get divorced um, or he dies, he has to pay her back, right? This is called Nitzchis on Barzal. Nitzchis on Barzal is basically investments. Part of the dowry is just money given to him, and there's a part of the dowry called Nitzchis on Barzal, meaning basically I'm giving this money to use and you know to have money to make profits off of, or either to use. Uh, to enjoy during the during the marriage or to make profits. So after the marriage dissolves, husband dies or he divorces her, so then he has to return it to her. So if the if the father promises, I'll give you a thousand dollars to invent to invest, 
So he has to write an exuva if I divorce her or we, I die first, then she gets 1500 It gets an additional 50%. Uh, However, if, if the Barzal is um Barzal is actual, you know, art articles of clothing or things that, you know, not, not, not money, they're, um, they're, they're property, movable objects that have value. So he only has to promise to give back four-fifths of that because they generally decrease in value. Um, they're meant to be used, and they decrease in value by being used. Shum b'mona, b'shav b'mona, ain't lo elamona. However, if um, he gives her, he gives him clothing, or he gives him linens, or he gives him anything to use, um, and it was evaluated as a mona, as like as a hundred dollars, right? B'shav b'mona. Now, before we were talking about um, where its value was. You know, the retail price was $1,000, so he only has to promise $800. Here we're talking about the wholesale price. Maybe the wholesale price is four-fifths cheaper. So if the wholesale price is uh, a mana, so then you have to give him, uh, you're selling it, give him at the wholesale price, then you have to write back a mana because that's really what it's worth, the wholesale price. Elo, ella, mana. Shumba, mana. Hit no sena, shloshim, ve'echad, sela, v'dinar. Right? If he accepts, um, Right? On himself, he he writes first. Depends who writes the same idea, right? He writes an exuba, right? I'm accepting a mana, so she of money to pay back to him, for, back to her. So she has to give him 125, right? Because that's you know, shloshim uh, ve'echad sela. She has to give him back 125 coins, the dinar. So 120, it'll be 124 plus one dinar, 125. But Arameos, he no chamish meos. Right, so because he is talking about the retail price, so he accepts to pay back for these movable objects, you know, four fifths. So she has to give him five fourths, right? And Arameos, you know, she he writes four hundred, he has to give him five hundred, right? Ma shehein, ma shechasan pose who pose pachos chomish. Basically, the law is that whatever, uh, whatever the chasan agrees to give back is four fifths of whatever he got. On the retail price, but it's worth less. Tanar Rabban on Eitzar Achloma Rishon Tam Lachacham. When the Mishnah taught that the husband only has to repay, the father-in-law only has to fulfill his promise of the dowry um, to the to the person to the chassan, and not to his brother. Of course, you don't have to say when the Rishon Tam Lachacham, when the first brother, the chassan Tam Lachacham, is Shani Amaritz, and his brothers Amaritz. I feel the Rishon Amaritz. Yeah, the Rishon Amaritz. The Shani Tam Lachacham. The second one's from Tefrach. Yachal Lomar Lachacham Isi Rosa Lita and Lachal Yefshi Lita. To your brother, I wanted to give. I liked your brother. He had charm. He was a good-looking guy. You know, he had potential in real estate. He could have made it big in the real estate market. Your brother? No, no, no. He, he's in Hebron. He's not making too much money. He's going to be staying the rest of his life. I don't want to give him a big dowry. He's not going to turn my money into anything. He's going to go to the Gemachim. He's going to ask me for more money. So the Gemara says, dinar. So the Gemara says, Hainu Reisha. Right? I kept on saying the same thing, right? Um... Right, um, it said that um, it said it said basically that if if it's um a valuation, right, you're giving him property, you're giving movable objects, so it's basically if it's at the retail price, so he only has to pay back four fifths, not the whole price, the retail price. Uh, high ratio. It said two cases, like a couple of cases, like this. And it says, it said cases where it was a lot of money, and cases where it was a little money. And it also mentioned one case where uh, he evaluated. He was the first one to write, and also a case where she was the first one to write, and then he accepts four fifths of the value. And if he writes first, then she has to accept five fourths of the value. She has to be machnas that she has to give that to him. Mishnah says, Paschal hachnas dog soften. Sala Nasa Shisha Dinar. This is basically a repetition of what we said in the previous Mishnah. That if she promised to give him, right, let's say four dollars. So she has to give, he has to he has to promise six dollars and back. This is talking about actual money where you can invest in a chasam kabalava sara dinar makupa. Um the chol mana umana, every hundred dollars that he gets, he has to promise her ten dollars for the kupa. We'll see what a kupa means in the Gemara. It means uh cosmetics or makeup or things like that. Shungli Omer Hakol Kimina Shungla says these laws are not binding everywhere. Only it, it depends where you live. You know, whatever the minag in your place is, that's what's binding. The Mars Ainu Pose Kinegdam Khamish Sarmana. This Mishnah is basically a repetition of, of the previous Mishnah. 
So the answer is Tana Iska Rabba, Tana Iska Zuta. Right? One mission, or the first mission was talking about a large investment that the father in law gives his son in law. Um, and this mission is talking about a small investment. The you need both cases. Tana Iska Rabba, the Nafish Ravka. You can make a lot of money. So therefore, he has to promise another, you know, 50% back. Aval Iska Zuta. The Zuta Rav, our mission is talking about, you know, give him a couple dollars, you know, not going to make a lot of money. Aim alone. Maybe he doesn't, have to, he doesn't have to pay another 50% back. Sricha. Yes, I mean, the Iska Zuta, it should said our mission, a small investment. The Zuta Zuna, right, to manage. Usually a Hutman, especially the Tamil Chacham, is not going to know how to manage his money. He's going to have to hire, hire a financial advisor. So, Zuta Zuna, you have to pay not so much expense. Well, Iska Rav, like, give him $1,000, maybe $1,000 back. Back in old days, when it was a lot of money, a hundred thousand dollars, a million dollars, you have to hire a financial advisor. It depends on your portfolio, how big it is. So you're gonna have to pay a lot of fees, to the managerial fees. The novice Yuna Emolo, in that case, maybe he wouldn't have to pay back the entire thing because he's forcing him to manage the money. Srikha, no, he's giving him an ability to have money to invest, so therefore he gets paid back fifty percent. It's a pretty good investment. I mean, you get a fifty percent return, you know, on your money. My kupa, what does it mean? Kupa, the kupa, every hundred dollars he gets, he has to give her ten dollars back for the kupa. My kupa, what is kupa? Amravashi, kupa shall be some, he has to give her fragrances, perfumes. Amravashi, lenem with varm, halal, elbi shalayim, only shalayim, and shalayim, people want it to smell good. And then moshavim, people don't care, don't wear perfumes. Why Ravashi, mana hanisha, mana miskabo. Right? What hundred dollars are we referring to? We're talking about, remember, if he gave, she gave him, clothing worth a hundred dollars right it depends if it's at the wholesale price or the retail price if it's the retail price so then you have to only he only promises to give back four fifths if it's the wholesale price you have to give back the entire value so how much is the money are we talking we're talking the money hanisha mana miscabel right the actual money uh the wholesale price or the money that miscabel that that uh or that was miscabel that she he gave her that she gave him. If you'll say maybe no, it's even right the retail price. Yom Rishon, I'll call Yom by Yom, right? So obviously she gets a lot, but even for her hundred thousand dollar investment, she'll get a hundred dollar back, even though it's only worth four fifths. Yom Rishon, I'll call Yom by Yom. He has to give her the first day of their marriage or every day. Until I'll call Yom by Yom. Shabbos Rishon, I'll call Shabbos Shabbos. Maybe it's only the first week of their marriage. Shabbos Brachos, or maybe every week. Until I'll call Shabbos Shabbos. Chodesh Rishon, I'll call Chodesh Chodesh. Maybe it's only the first month. Every day of the first month. Or maybe it means in every month of the first year. Maybe only Shana Rishon, he gives her a basam. Uh, a kol Shana Rishon, he has to give her the entire life. He has to give her. Now, obviously, if you have to give her an entire life every day for the rest of her life, it's not really fair that if she gives him $100, he has to give her 10 dinar, 10, 10% every day. I mean, it doesn't mean, it probably just means you average it out, the 10 dinar over the entire marriage. That's probably what it means. Um... <clears throat> Teku. I'm unsure about this. I'm a Rehud Amarab. Maisa Bidosh Nakdum and Gurion. We're going to find out that the daughter of Nakdum and Gurion was a very wealthy person. Shapaskula Chamim Arba Meo Zuhuvim. They gave her when she asked, right? They they said, how much how much perfume should she get? It wasn't clear from the Ksuba uh, how much she should get. They gave her 400 gold coins worth of Basamim at one time. Lakupa Kashal Basamim. Right, it was obviously a discussion how much he gave her. He promised her, uh, she promised him in the ksuba how much clothing or linens or you know, or you know, and movable objects that he promised her. And they gave her for one day, they gave her 400 gold coins worth of cosmetics and perfumes. Apparently, she was angry about it. This wasn't enough. Your, your daughter should get just the same amount. I don't know how man. There's a rabbi that said, uh, Yeah, right. It's a man. And all of I, they should get so much money for their cosmetics. Our daughters are poor. Even one dinar for a day would be a lot of money. He was riding on the donkey. He was leaving Yerushalayim. His students were following after him. He saw a young girl. She was trying to gather barley seeds from the dung of Arab-owned animals. Once she saw Yochem and Zaka, was a big rabbi. Usually rabbis have big tzaka funds because people give them money to a portion for tzaka. The Zafa Basara, she covered her face with her hair. Interesting. But Amdala Fanov, she wanted to disclose her, 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 
her lineage. She didn't want to reveal who she was. She was embarrassed. Amr Lo Rebbe Parnasain, Rebbe, give me some something to eat. Amr Lo Biti Miat, who are you? Amr Lo Beat Nakdima Ben Gurion, she had to reveal. Ani the daughter of Adam Ben Gurion. Amr Lo Biti, he said, my daughter, Mama Shal Beis Avicha Hechan Halach. We're gonna see she had a huge ksuba. Where where all the money go? Amr Lo Rebbe Lo Chadin Mas and Mas of Yerushalayim. Don't they have the following uh, axiom in Yerushalayim? People sing this Melech Mamon Chaser. We'll see what this means more tomorrow. But the simple meaning is that if you want to sold away your money, you want to keep your money, chaser, you should give charity. Amila chesed, all do chesed with it. That keeps your money, have to a lot of money. Not only was her father rich, but her, her in-laws were rich. Where is the money you got from the in-laws? Amrila bazev ibe dzeh. Somehow, because their their finances were commingled, they were they were they probably invested in the same thing. The in-laws mechutanim. They they put money down on real estate together. So. They lost together. I'm a little Rebbe. She said to him, don't you remember? You were at my wedding. You signed the Mike Suva. I'm a little Talmidav. He said to his Talmidim, I remember. One million gold coins. Well, she was a portion of her dowry from her father, right? To bring into the marriage. Not including what she got from her father. Yisrael. Yochan cried. Zakai cried. Fortune is Israel, but it's not a fortune. Approved is Israel. When they're doing Hashem's rot, so no one can overtake them, no one can reach them. This was obviously after the Khorban based on Migdash. Hashem gives them over into the hands of a lowly nation. Not only in the hands of a lowly nation, but also in the hands of the animals of a lowly nation. They should collect barley seeds from the dung of the animals. We'll talk more tomorrow about Nakuma and Gurian and his prolific stucca, prolific charity. I uh, hope you enjoyed today's share. See you and Eva Ben and We'll talk more about what a Metsia is, what a, we mean, the Gemara means by the Metsia of a woman, what she finds. How is a Metsia comparable to a Duffa? To getting extra money, you don't have to really work to find something in the street. See you when you have been seeing on as part of the Great Yeshiva YouTube coming up next.